Have any of you seen my impressions? Have you seen any of my impressions before? I don't do many. I do, I do a few. Um, I'll, I'll do one for you now. Um, are, there any, um, are there any lesbians in? Does anyone enjoy smashing pasties? <laughs> Are there any lesbians? There must be some lesbians, surely. What is there, a pool tournament on? <laughs> well, where are the lesbians? Are you up there somewhere? Oh, there's, there's some lesbians up there. Are there lesbians over here? Hello, girls, how are you? You all right? Very nice to have you in. The impression that I do, it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression per se, but it's the... Um, hang on, the cameraman's coming to get the lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's more a piece of physical theatre than an impression, but it's actually it's, it's the breakup of a same-sex relationship between two women. And I think it captures the emotional turmoil and the anguish when love breaks down, when you still love that person, but you're no longer in love with that person, and you've got to go your separate ways. Would, would you like me to perform it for you now? OK. Just give me, just give me a second here. <laughs> yeah, what did you think was going to happen? I feel duty bound now. To, uh, what's your name, madam? Sh what? <laughs> Sharal. Sh okay, fine. Sharal. <laughs> sure, we'll go with Sharal. And who, who are you with? Who's, who's the other half? Rosie. Rosie. Hi. <laughs> I feel duty bound to ask you the question I've asked every lesbian I've ever met. What would it take to get you back on solids? <laughs> Oh, I've got a maybe, yes. <laughs> I'm two Bacardi breezes away. Come on. <laughs> yeah, go on, once. Is it right if your girlfriend wants you to watch her pee? <coughs> she likes you watching her pee. Yeah, trying to get you to watch her. She's like, oh, no. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. The question I get asked that every show. <laughs> it's weird that you would ask that. So, because she likes a lot of people to watch her pee. Um, is that your thing? You like people to watch you pee? Well, clearly, yes. <laughs> he didn't say that for no reason, did he? Do you remember earlier when you said he was a pedo for making you dress up as a schoolgirl? <laughs> I think it might be payback time. <laughs> but surely you could just dress her as a schoolgirl and have a do a wee on you. That's fine. <laughs> that plays into your whole pedo fantasy. <laughs> Everyone's happy. Apart from anyone with any sort of sense of taste and decency. <laughs> who are frankly horrified by you too. What's your name, sir? Sam. Sam. Hi, Sam. Southwell. What, sorry? Southwell. Southwell? Yeah, definitely, I need a surname for this. <laughs> I'm not in charge of the register. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so, and what is it about being watched pee that you enjoy? Well, just tell us. We're all interested to know. Well, you do, so... It's not like that. What is it like? Once you've, you know, once you've been with someone, there's a level of intimacy that suggests that you would be uh, able to pee in front of them or, or maybe shit on their chest. <laughs> but some people aren't like us, baby. <laughs> some people don't think in the way... They're closed-minded. They've got a sense of, I don't know, appropriate occasion. <laughs> It's all right, we're not taping this for... Oh, no, we are. <laughs> Lovely golden showers. <laughs> Any other thoughts? What car, do I drive? what car do I drive? I don't actually drive a car, sir. I roll in one. <laughs> Motherfucker, yeah, with the bitches in the back, yeah! Any other questions, thoughts? What's your favourite type of cheese? What's my favourite type of cheese? <laughs> Knob. <laughs> Where 
was the best place you performed? The best place I've performed? I'd have to say in your girlfriend. <laughs> Dave and Susan, they've been going out for years and years and years, ten years, since college. Susan went home for the weekend to see her parents. They had Sunday lunch together, they got a little bit tipsy over lunch. Nothing the matter with that, you would think. Lovely. All the way up to Hull to see them. Got drunk over Sunday lunch, somehow the topic of wife swapping came up. <laughs> and her parents, for a joke, said, oh, we were terrible for that back in the 70s. Oh, keys in a bowl at a party. Oh, terrible. Oh, always doing it. We don't know who your real dad is. <laughs> They said that to their daughter. <laughs> now, she was fine at the time because she was drunk at her lunch. But then on the train ride home, she starts to feel a bit grimy and horrible and, oh, oh, oh. Huh. <coughs> and eventually, she works herself up into a real state. She thinks, well, maybe it was a joke on me. Maybe they were joking, but I was the butt of the joke. Maybe they did do that in the 70s. Maybe he's not my real dad. My oh, God. Oh, God. She got into Dave. And, of course, what Dave should have done is taken her in his strong, loving arms. Hey. It's just a silly joke. I'll pop the kettle on, I'll make you a cup of tea, I'll run you a bath. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> that is what he should have done. But that's not what he did, that's not what he said. What he said, without skipping a beat, I've killed an African child. <laughs> but what he said, without skipping a beat, straight away, Uh, who got your mum? <laughs> Your hair. What? I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just. I, I like the Spice Girls as much as the next man, but <laughs> it's a no. It's. Hmm. I can't help noticing you've got a tattoo on your. Uh, what's well, your boob, isn't it? Really. <laughs> it sort of draws the eye. What is that exactly? It's a rose. On your. As if boobs aren't fun enough as they are. <laughs> she thought. I tell you, I'll brighten these things up. No fella's gonna like these. What do guys like? They like flowers, don't they? Yeah, I'll get a <laughs> picture of a flower. <laughs> um, any other? <laughs> Sorry, sir, could you just repeat what you said there? <laughs> She's on the blob. <laughs> How nicely put, sir. I think... <laughs> I think a lesser man might have said menstruation or her time of the month, or maybe period. <laughs> Even Arsenal are playing at home, or she has the red devil in her belly. <laughs> Up on bricks. <laughs> but you went with a, the much more genteel. On the blob! <laughs> She's on the blob, and she? <laughs> I think in all seriousness, if a woman says, look, I can't have sex, I've got my period, I would say, well, your arse isn't bleeding, is it? <laughs> Yet. me a moment to work my magic. <laughs> Domestic violence. There's a topic for you. It happens. People don't like talking about it, but it happens in all our communities. Yeah? Something needs to be done. There's a lot of charities dealing with the aftermath. Very few doing anything preventative. I'd like to start a Jimmy Carr halfway house. A place where women can go and be safe and secure. And be re-educated about cooking and cleaning and putting out... <laughs> doesn't need to happen. There's nothing sad in the seeing a woman with two black eyes. She's been told twice, she just doesn't understand. <laughs> You're looking slightly disapproving there, madam. You all right? I like the fact that you two look incredibly rock and roll in a sea of middle class. <laughs> what a wonderful thing. What, what do you do? Are you in a band or something? Me? Yeah. Uh, no, Called Cyber what? Cyber dog? Cyber dog? Where do you think I got this? <laughs> hey? It's rubber on the inside. <laughs> I might have a funky underpinning. <laughs> I don't know what a funky underpinning is. That's how unfunky I am. Were you expecting more thrash metal at this gig? Yes, I'm sorry to disappoint. 99% of women kiss with their eyes closed, which is why it's so difficult to identify a rapist. When I was at school, a girl called Alice wanked off a dog for three cigarettes. 
I know what you're thinking. How did a dog get cigarettes? <laughs> I, once, I once had sex with an Australian girl. She said mid-coitus, whilst fucking. <laughs> she said, have you slimed yet? <laughs> have you slimed yet? <laughs> I thought it was all fucking Ghostbusters. <laughs> I fantasise about having sex with the gymnast. Not just because they're really bendy and flexible and you could do loads of extraordinary positions, but also because I imagine they do a brilliant dismount. <laughs> they end up by the side of the bed like that. <laughs> and if they bend their knees even just a little bit, you can make them do it again. <laughs> well, I'll tell you why I've asked you all to come this evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to talk to you about men that like obese women. I'm not talking about men that like women with a fuller figure. That seems entirely normal, natural and right. More cushion for the pushing, as I believe people say. <laughs> I think that's the expression. No, I'm talking about men that like women who are... can't leave the house fat. <laughs> so, I'm not talking about anyone in here this evening. Unless, in order to get out, someone had to cut the side of the house off. <laughs> and there was some sort of winch involved. I'm not talking about people with water retention. I'm talking about people with cake retention. <laughs> people that tell you they've got a thyroid problem. You say, oh, really, a thyroid problem? What are you taking for that? Pies? <laughs> you know, the kind of girl that looks as if she makes a cracking breakfast. But wouldn't want to share it with you. <laughs> I saw a thing on TV the other day, actually. It was on one of these kind of makeover shows that were on during the day. They did a makeover on a girl. She was 34 stone. It's like rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. <laughs> I say a makeover, they gave her a fringe. <laughs> Is that really going to turn the corner for a girl like that? That's what I'm asking. I don't think it will. I can't imagine a scenario where a guy, you know, he's drinking in a bar, he looks across, he sees a girl, she's 34 stone, it'd be tough to miss her, let's face it. <laughs> he thinks to himself, she's a little bit big for me. Goes back to his drink. Meanwhile, the makeover team are in. Snip, snip, snip. <laughs> he looks back, he thinks, actually, I would. <laughs> it's the excuses that get me. The excuses are amazing. The camera adds £10. Stop eating fucking cameras. <laughs> now, for better or for worse, this is a question I use to judge an audience, to judge individuals. If you could all answer, that would be great. Would you fuck your dad to save your mum? <laughs> Go on, what was the question? Yes, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of Wittgenstein's theorems. <laughs> um, you'd suck off his mum. <laughs> He's done you. He has done you. I, I, I'm not from Perth, so I may never have to make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. You sound like you come from a very broken home. I'm not suggesting you fucked your mum, but only because you wouldn't want to two-time your sister. <laughs> it's, uh, what, what's your name? Toby. What? What, sorry? Toby. Toby. Toby, do you mind me sharing with the group? Thank you very much indeed, Toby. That makes it much easier. Because there's a heckle. It's quite a good heckle, quite a funny heckle. But we have to do a heckle put-down now. God. <laughs> I would love if I could just let it go, but I can't. <laughs> there are rules. But you don't mind me sharing with the group, so it makes it much easier. We can go old school. Stop what, sorry? Stop stalling. Stop stalling. <laughs> don't panic, sir. <laughs> I've got this. I'll have to put you on asshole waiting. <laughs> Toby's mum. Is so fat. <laughs> She's a fucking disgrace, Toby. Your mum is such a chunky monkey wobble slob. <laughs> Fatty boom batty blubber naught. She's so fucking fat, when she fell down the stairs, I thought EastEnders had finished. <laughs> boom, 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 ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> True story. Ahem. <laughs> <clears throat> 
You, sir. <laughs> what did you say? What was it? Stop stalling? Yeah? What, what's your name? Gary. Are you trying to say Gary? <laughs> Watch me. Gary. <laughs> yeah. 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 The fuck is that? <laughs> well, Gary, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mum's teeth. <laughs> Women say they want their ideal man to be the outdoors type, the kind of man that enjoys long walks in the countryside. And women say they want their ideal man to be the kind of man that'll take control, the kind of man that's not afraid to take a few risks. Basically, what you're saying, ladies, is your ideal man is a rapist. <laughs> And it's true, if you're a rapist, you've got pretty much a pick of women. <laughs> it's funny, cos it's true. <laughs> My point, there's an incredible amount of pressure on women these days to be beautiful and thin, and all I can say is, we've got some very brave girls in here this evening, really. <laughs> Terrific stuff. <sighs> no, there are some stunning-looking women in here this evening, and some right dogs. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I'm joking. No one in here is stunning. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not sounding very charitable. I do do my bit. You know, I've created a foundation for battered women. It's really thick to hide the bruising. <laughs> it's weird. Domestic abuse is still a real sort of taboo subject, isn't it? People don't like talking about domestic abuse, and ironically, that makes the problem much worse, because the charities that deal with domestic abuse, their problem is a problem of communication, because the women that they're trying to reach out and communicate with, the battered wives, are the very women that won't shut up and listen. <laughs> Tragically, this is the only language they understand. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's like the lion from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I wouldn't last a fucking day in this city, would I? Uh... <laughs> when I did used to work for a living, I was always very jealous of the women that I worked with, because women have the best excuse for a day off sick. I love a day off sick. Marvellous. Duvet, very nice and comfy. Mm. <laughs> and women have the best excuse. The best excuse, as we all know, is women's problems. And the reason women's problems is the best excuse is because women's problems is the end of a conversation. <laughs> Why didn't you come in yesterday? Women's problems. <laughs> I like to think if I was the boss, things would be slightly different. Women's problems. Tits or fanny? <laughs> Which is it? Maybe I could have a look. <laughs> Did you know women reach their sexual peak after 35 years? Yes. Men reach theirs after about four minutes. <laughs> which is why we get more done. <laughs> my girlfriend said to me, have you been having sex behind my back? I said, who the fucking hell do you think it was? <laughs> and another thing, it wouldn't kill you to turn around once in a while, check how I'm doing. <laughs> I'm ten years into a relationship now. Anyone be there anyone longer than ten years? Yes. What's the longest we got in the room? Thirteen. Th Thirteen? 26. Anyone more than 26? 28? More than 28? How, how long? For, sorry? You, you've, been you've been together for 43 years? I think. Come on. 43 years. Now, I obviously... I don't know what it's like after 43 years. I think that's an extraordinary commitment, especially in this day and age. That is quite something. But I don't know if it's the same for you, because I've only been together with my girl for 10 years, but... Things have got quite predictable in the bedroom. Now, when I lower my entire ball bag into her mouth, <laughs> she is pretty much guaranteed to wake up. <laughs> Same? <laughs> oh, you couldn't see that. He just went, yeah, same. You look worried on their behalf. They've been married 43 years. Don't panic. They've tried everything. <laughs> Who, what's your relationship with them? What, how do you know them? That's your mum and dad. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> well, I hope the image of your dad teabagging your mum 
present. I hope. I, for one... <laughs> I don't know about looking your parents in the eyes again. I don't think you'll be able to drink tea. <laughs> Hi. OK, finally, I need something you find in the kitchen. No, I said <laughs> A woman? <laughs> It's not 1974. <laughs> you find a kitchen, a woman. <laughs> She'll have my tea on. <laughs> your mum? Who said your mum? <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> your mum. <laughs> your mum's in the kitchen. She'll make you tea and toast if you're nice. <laughs> mum! <laughs> your mum. <laughs> That's what we're going for there, OK. <laughs> right, so we've got Henry VIII, Australian accent, mind reading, he's a creationist, your mum. <laughs> Shall we leave it there? <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> that is all the improv I do. That's my favourite bit, the bit where people shout out suggestions. The actual play bit at the end, I always think, is a bit shit. <laughs> I'm always suspicious they might just be making that up. <laughs> you actually look disappointed as an audience now. <laughs> You're like, oh, I thought it was going to be really good. <laughs> the Aussie Henry VIII and his mum. <laughs> oh, yeah, do you want to get married? <laughs> I can read your fucking mind. Oh, shit's that? <laughs> what, sorry? I forgot your mum. <laughs> All right, there's Henry VIII fucking your mum. <laughs> you happy now? That's your mum. <laughs> you happy? Did we miss out your mum? Is she getting fucked by the king? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Sheila? Yeah, take it, you bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I know you like it, I can read your fucking mind. <laughs> Are there any lesbians in? No, my gay dar is pretty much honed in on this, this pair down there. Hello, how are you two? You all right? Yeah. I, are you, I presume you're a couple? Married. Yeah. You're married? Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Fabulous. How long have you been married? Since October. Since October? My God, it's new and fresh. <laughs> have you even finished consummating the relationship? No. You don't know when you're finished, do you? That's one of the problems. <laughs> With your lifestyle choice. We'll just put that on hold. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> well, so you're married, you're committed to each other. Well, it's maybe a crazy question to ask you because you're in this long-term relationship and you love each other, but what would it take to get you back on solids? <laughs> <laughs> She's a definite no and you're a maybe. OK, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love my job. I tell you what, I'm going to do a test and see whether we've got any other sisters in the, in the room, see if there's any other lesbians. Sisters, like I'm a lesbian, I've got the haircut, come on. <laughs> I look a bit like KD Lang, I could get away with it. <laughs> You're sniggering. What's your name, blonde lady? Who... Move along? <laughs> what are you saying, Vicky? Dance for me, monkey boy. <laughs> Is he your fella? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what do you mean? He's either your fella or he isn't. Is he, is he your fella? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, she's saying yes. <laughs> And you're saying no, and kind of you're just look, you've gone really red and you look really embarrassed. <laughs> They're fuck buddies. <laughs> oh! I see what, how very modern. <laughs> how very 2005. So you're not going out with each other, but you are fuck buddies. <laughs> that is fantastic. Can we just all take a moment to, you know, congratulate that man there? <laughs> yeah. 
he's, a lot of work has gone into that. A lot of work has gone into that. He's had to buy a Cosmopolitan for a couple of years. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> and they'll know that you're a dirty little hussy. <laughs> The great thing about that is that he's convinced you that, yeah, we don't need a relationship. It's so... <laughs> it's so old-fashioned. I should be able to sleep with whoever I want to sleep with. And so should you, as long as it's just me. <laughs> when I say... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there'll be a lot of jokes. <laughs> it's not every day I get to talk to a slag. Come on. <laughs> Now, I don't know where the mark is until I overstep it. That's my... <laughs> you just did. <laughs> that is juvenile. That, sorry, for those of you that didn't see that, it'll be on the DVD. <laughs> available at all good car boots. <laughs> Vicky's response to that, yeah, she's been called a slag at a show. That's not good in anyone's book, and I apologise for that unreservedly. But did you really need to do that? <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fancies? <laughs> An amputee. <laughs> it's not Paul McCartney, is it? I can't see. <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fantasy? Girlfriend. My girlfriend. <laughs> well, maybe we could double team her. <laughs> my girlfriend is your ultimate sexual fantasy. <laughs> yes, people see my girlfriend and they see me and they say, she's only going out with you because you're famous. And I say, but I am famous. <laughs> What's your point? <laughs> is, is that your girlfriend? That is my girlfriend. That's your girlfriend? <laughs> I'm not going to swap if that's OK. <laughs> Can I just clarify? You are a beautiful lady, no disrespect to you. <laughs> but he heckled, I had to put him down. <laughs> and the only way to get to him was through you. <laughs> I like the way as well. I suggest your girlfriend wasn't good looking enough and you applauded. <laughs> Yeah, you'll be using those hands later on, won't you? <laughs> there are any single men in this evening? Anyone single? You're, you're single. Well, don't, don't panic. I've got some advice for you. If you really like a girl and you ask her out and she says to you, I love you like a brother, suggest a weekend in Norfolk. <laughs> Unless you're from Norfolk, in which case it probably is your sister. So, are you from Norfolk? You don't look like you're from Norfolk. I'm from Thetford in Norfolk. You're from Thetford in Norfolk? <laughs> and is that your sister, girlfriend, both? <laughs> Sorry, and you're here with your sister? <coughs> Not really, though. <laughs> Saturday night out, I'll take my sister. She's a, she's a looker. Have you ever with the... <laughs> I'm only asking. Do you, think, do you think your sister's attractive, can I ask? <laughs> do, do you think she's attractive or not? She's OK. She's OK. Did you give her one? <laughs> <laughs> that was very low, sorry. What about you, love? I can't believe that. He's from Norfolk. <laughs> and he's brought his sister. <laughs> it could scarcely be better. <laughs> I'm amazed you didn't bring your mum. Did you split up? <laughs> I often get asked this. What celebrity would you most like to sleep with? Angelina Jolie. I'd love to have a go on that. <laughs> She's an attractive woman, isn't she? I had a dream about her a couple of weeks ago. I'm not saying it was sexy. I had to get the sheets off with a toffee hammer. <laughs> That's a weird joke, isn't it? Because at once your mind has to go, uh, and, oh, toffee hammers. <laughs> I realise I haven't got much of a chance with Angelina Jolie. She's with Brad Pitt. 
I've got a face like a potato. <laughs> we might do this evening, Birmingham. Obviously, you've all come out to see the show this evening. I'm very grateful for that. I love my job. I love the fact you come out and see me live. But we're all sort of friends here, and you've bought tickets to come and see me at the show. So I tend not to get heckled in the way that I used to get heckled when I used to play the clubs. When I used to play the clubs, you were unannounced. The, you know, the venue was bigger than, than the name, so people would come along. They wouldn't be invested. If they didn't like it, they would shout rude things out. I used to love that. Proper, aggressive heckling. I thought, well, why don't we? Because yeah, people tend not to do it at these kind of gigs because people don't want to fuck up the evening for themselves or for anyone else. <laughs> Hold your horses just one second. <laughs> people tend, one notable exception, people tend not to want to fuck the gig up. But I thought it's quite nice, it's quite a fun thing, heckles. So why don't we have a heckle amnesty, a little two, three minutes where you can just fill your boots. If you've got something abusive to shout, <laughs> have at it. Fuck up. Have you actually got Tourette's? That was, that was so quick. <laughs> Can't fuck bum. And fuck bum, that's such a weird thing to shout. Fuck bum. Like the rudest words you know. Fuck cunt bum. Any other heckles? <laughs> what, sorry? <laughs> Peter K was sold out, so you had to come here. <laughs> Unlucky. I bet he wouldn't have called you a cunt. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not Peter Kay. <laughs> cunt. <laughs> it's a very different kind of show. Peter's show's good too. I love swearing. I've always quite... Oh, you all right? Sorry, what was that? I missed a bit of chat. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Sorry, it's not the telly. If you talk, I can hear. Now you're looking pissed off. You're thinking, I didn't press the red button, it's gone all interactive. What, <laughs> what, what were you saying? Go on, say. I thought you were talking about snake bite the drink. You thought. You, <laughs> she just said, I thought you were talking about snake bite the drink. <laughs> yeah. What, what happened was. OK, in a joke, a joke is like two stories, yeah? <laughs> and the first story makes you make an assumption about something. So the assumption people made about snake bite in, in that joke was that it was a snake biting you. But, but he, no. <laughs> That's the setup of the joke. So you made the assumption he's talking about a snake bite, a snake biting someone. In the second part of the joke, often known as the punchline, <laughs> what, you'll, what you'll find is that rug will be, will be whipped from under you and you'll realise that the assumption you made was erroneous. <laughs> Suddenly revealing a fact that was previously concealed is, is the nature of all one-liners, Badham. So, in essence, I was talking about both snake bites, the thing that happens when a snake bites you, <laughs> and also the drink. <laughs> no problem at all, it's lovely to help. It's actually, it's nice to have you here this evening, because I think one of the charity gigs I did helped pay for the minibus that brought you here. <laughs> so. Nice to see that money wasn't wasted. <laughs> oh, bless her little heart. Uh, what are you making of the rest of the show? Are you just enjoying the spangly things? <laughs> They say don't masturbate, you'll go blind. Yeah, only if you get it in your eyes. <laughs> Aim away. Who do you think about when you masturbate? <laughs> Her. So do I, she's lovely. <laughs> that was a good answer, you think about your partner when you masturbate. I think I'll put my hand on my heart, speak on behalf of every man in here and say, when we masturbate, we think about you ladies. We think about our partners, our wives and our girlfriends. Yeah? We think, <laughs> we do. I do, I always think of my girlfriend. I think, Ocean's walk in. <laughs> She doesn't even know I've got these magazines. <laughs> I'd like to end by talking about threesomes, because it tends to divide the sexes. Most men would be quite up for a threesome with two girls. Most women don't really fancy that action. If you're asked to bring a friend, you tend to get a little bit offended. And I think it's because men are such bad communicators. You know, when we ask for that, women sort of hear, oh, what, I'm not enough woman for you, you need two women to satisfy you because you're such a big man. That's not what we're saying, ladies. What we're saying is, wouldn't it be brilliant if after sex there was someone there for you to talk to? <laughs>
Men, men tend to fall asleep directly after sex. All I'm saying is, maybe for women, fall a bit more into it. <laughs> Sorry, that's not meant to be misogynistic in any way. I was reading in Tits and Arse magazine. <laughs> Very interesting and informative article. It was about the difficulties of asking your partner for anal sex. It was entitled, What If She Takes It The Wrong Way? <laughs> Sorry, I can see you're shifting uncomfortably there. I didn't, mean to, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm sure whatever you decide about anal sex, I'm sure he'll be right behind you. It's easier to get forgiveness than permission. I just thought I'd slip that in. I got interviewed last week by a very nice young lady. She said, what's your house like? I said, I've got a semi. <laughs> Which would have been fine, but then I showed it to her. And of course, by then, it wasn't a semi. If you ask ten randomly chosen women how often they wash their knickers, a surprising number answer, how did you get in here? <laughs> Come on in, sit down. What's your name, madam? Alexa. Alexa. And what, what is it, some sort of cystitis? What's the matter? <laughs> what do you do for a living, Alexa? Um, lots of things. You do lots of things? Yeah. Yes, I think I've seen a card advertising your services. <laughs> Are you new in town? Go on, sir. Uh, Don't let me guess. So, I'm an aspiring presenter. You're an aspiring presenter? Yeah. Ooh. Well, I'll say to you what I say to all aspiring presenters that I meet. I'll have an Americano, please. <laughs> I fucking love my job. Um, there's a thin line between neighbourhood watch and becoming a vigilante, and it's a line you cross when you buy a cape. <laughs> Do you know there's now a warning on superhero costumes? If you buy a superhero costume, it says on it, this costume does not give you special powers. <laughs> or, indeed, the right to see your children. Kids say the funniest things. Please don't hurt Mummy. <laughs> She's already dead. <laughs> Are there any mums in by shouting out, who's a mum? Yes. Proper ones, not just ones that have done it to get a flat. <laughs> I'm kidding, we all love mums. You know, mums are great. They're the great unsung heroes of our society. They do so much for so little. What do mums ever get? All they ever get is, you know, not even a thank you, just Mother's Day. Mother's Day's rubbish, isn't it? It's like a Toblerone from the garage. <laughs> or some flowers from a lamppost. <laughs> what? I think it's all right to give your mum flowers you've taken from a lamppost where there's been an accident. Because if you think about it, you wouldn't do that if she'd brought you up a little bit better. <laughs> it's her fault. Of course, one of the major supermarkets is trying to redress the balance, yeah? There's just Mother's Day for mums, but they've decided to have a Mum of the Year competition. Mum of the Year to sort of, you know, just reward ordinary, everyday mums. Acknowledge, you know, all the good work mums do. The only thing I would question about their charitable endeavour is the massive banners they put outside every one of their superstores saying, Enter your mum today. <laughs> I mean, fair enough, if she's up for that, she deserves something. <laughs> Might I suggest a call from social services? Sugary tea was my mum's cure for everything. Her, like, elixir of life. If you had any kind of problem, emotional, physical, financial, it wouldn't matter, she would say, come in, I'll make you a nice sweet cup of tea. Which was fine until we found out my brother was diabetic. <laughs> my crisps tasted rubbish. <laughs> oh. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> I became Latino there for a second. <laughs> no, you're there. Um, yeah, I did. I had crisps. Did you see? I had crisps. Jimmy Con Carney crisps. The good people are walkers for comic relief. They brought out a flavour of my crisps, and it was me and Al Murray and Frank Skinner and Stephen Fry. And then they made these crisps, and every packet they sold, they gave five pence to the starving people in Africa. And I said to them, why don't you just send them the fucking crisps? <laughs> got to make more sense, hasn't it? Because they can't be as fussy about the flavours. 
If you're starving, you're fine, aren't you? Well, these are a bit... Nah, fair enough. <laughs> I've read an article recently about British men's ultimate sexual fantasy. And it surprised me. The results of it surprised me. It was a proper survey. They asked 3,000 men their opinion. I'd like to do a little straw poll in here this evening, because the results of this, I was shocked. Ultimate sexual fantasies. Has anyone got one they wouldn't mind admitting to? Jessica Alba. Jessica Alba, it's a specific person that you, that you would like to bone. Well, I happen to know Jessica Alba does an awful lot of work for charity, maybe... <laughs> Who the fuck has a side party? <laughs> You're gonna kick yourself when I tell you. Me. <laughs> well, I thought I'd kick off with some jokes, Glass. Go not fuck about too much. I'll pause for breath and say hello. How are you this evening, Glasgow? Are you well? <laughs> like an angry mob. <laughs> bloody, well, I thought we'd kick off properly. We're in a beautiful room, the Armadillo in Glasgow. Bloody marvellous. I thought we'd, we'd start things properly, yeah? Because everyone's dressed up. It's a Saturday night. Let's start things properly. Let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Let's have a round of Yeah, let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Yeah, yeah, quite right, yeah. That's, actually, that's, that's probably enough. Looking around, some of them have made no effort. <laughs> You've not made an effort, have you? <laughs> and so your comment there is I haven't made much of an effort. Well, there's some cameras and some fucking lights. I don't know what you had in mind. <laughs> it's not like I come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out of your mouth, is it? <laughs> it seems like a very weird thing from a quite a tough-looking man from Glasgow to say. Oh, you've not made much of an effort. <laughs> I thought you'd be dressed up prettier. <laughs> it's a little bit prison rape coming from you, sir. <laughs> That's what it feels like. When's the comedy on? When's the comedy on? <laughs> When's the comedy on? Really? <laughs> What's your name, sir? What's your name? David. David? Yeah. What's your favourite colour, David? Blue. Blue, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like the fairest way to deal with you, David. There are so many things I could say. <laughs> Number between one and eight, David. Six. Six. Okay, and you said to me, when's the comedy on? <laughs> It says, if you want my comeback, you'll have to scrape it off your mum's teeth. <laughs> These things don't lie, David. These things don't lie. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. She swallowed the lot. <laughs> <laughs> Any other ultimate sexual fancies? A Viking helmet? <laughs> what have you got? Two vaginas? <laughs> Good, lovely. Any other ultimate sexual fantasies? Schoolgirl. Schoolgirl? And then you've pointed at your man. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got a, we've got a special term for a schoolgirl fantasy now. We call it pedo. <laughs> Sorry, sir, do you like what do you like? Schoolgirl teacher. Schoolgirl teacher? <laughs> Schoolgirl though, really. <laughs> Yeah, no, because the specialist term for the schoolgirl unit. Yeah, it's a, you, you are a pedo. <laughs> it's no, it's good. Look at the positive. You get to be on a list. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Everyone in the neighbourhood knows where you live. <laughs> That's convenient, isn't it? Do you make her dress up as a schoolgirl? She's done it. <laughs> <laughs> She's done it. <laughs> Have her washed and brought to my room. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't wash her. Yes. I want your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Dad? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I do for a living. I think of little jokes in my head and then I tell them to you so that you'll like me. <laughs> Sounds a bit tragic when I say, <laughs> what was that? It's not working. 
fuck off. <laughs> Where are you? It's not working, man. Give us a wave. Yeah, what do you do, sir? Telecoms. You, <laughs> you do telecoms? <laughs> what, what do you do? Do you...? I do you. I do you. <laughs> I do you telephone. <laughs> what, sorry? You build them in their work. <laughs> Ironically, you work in communications and can hardly... <laughs> ..can hardly string a fucking sentence together. <laughs> what, sorry? I've got... I've got a big nose. <laughs> I literally don't have a big nose. <laughs> That's a weird... Ha That's like an insult you've heard someone else use. And you've gone, I've got a big fucking laugh. <laughs> That's gonna work best with a comic with a big nose. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Thomas. <laughs> what do you do, Thomas? You're a student. What are you studying? Uh, mathematics. mathematics? <laughs> are you at school, Thomas? <laughs> I don't know if we should continue this any further, because it's starting to feel like grooming. <laughs> are you at school? Yeah, I'm at school. <laughs> you got a big nose. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> any other heckles? Oh, what was that? That sounded good. Go on, what was that? <laughs> what was it? Pedophile. I'm a paedophile. <laughs> I was just fucking chatting to him. I've done nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Who's come the furthest? Has anyone come from, like, a long way away? Overseas? Or... Canvey Island? Can be Island? <laughs> Right, now, I know Canvey Island, so I happen to know that you've not come a long way from your home. You've just brought it with you. <laughs> Did you come with him? <laughs> no, good. Canvey Island's the furthest anyone came. Well, fuck you. <laughs> you were all in the area anyway, were you? What's that? <laughs> Was that Dover? <laughs> well, you were castrated before you got a chance to... <laughs> Right. <laughs> Were you worried about sounding silly, so you thought, well, I'll put on a ludicrous high-pitched voice? <laughs> that should sort things out, shouldn't it? <laughs> so you're a sailor, are you? <laughs> Imagine my surprise at your high-pitched voice. <laughs> what, sorry? <laughs> Posh prick. <laughs> Posh prick seems a bit harsh. <laughs> what's, uh, what's your name, sir? Miles. <laughs> Miles. <laughs> and you think I might be a bit posh. <laughs> All right, Miles, what's your favourite colour? Blue. Seems like the fairest way to deal with this. <laughs> B-L-U-E. Some... B -L -U -E. <laughs> Number between one and eight, Miles. Four. Four. All right. Ooh. It says if you've come as a cunt, you've won. <laughs> bit of good news. <laughs> Are you all right in the back? <laughs> Excellent. It's not nice to hear that, because often when I go to comedy shows, and I go to them all the time, I love coming out to see live comedy. The thing is, though, if I'm sat right at the back, I'm a little bit disappointed. I always get my ticket and go, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm fucking miles away. <laughs> but there are, of course, advantages to being right at the back. You get more of a sense of theatre, of people coming together and sharing a sense of humour. What a wonderful thing that is, the great British musical spirit. And also, if you're right at the back, this sort of thing won't happen. I fucked your mum. <laughs> That's not going to happen to any of you. I've got nothing but respect for your mums. They're hard-working, decent women. Your mum still owes me a tenner. <laughs> I'm joking. I owe her a tenner. <laughs> Bluff. I'm your real dad. Kidding, no-one knows who your real dad is. <laughs> that isn't your mum there, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah! <laughs> this is a bit awkward. Uh, <laughs> hello, sir. <laughs> She's brilliant in bed, isn't she? <laughs> Well, sorry, I don't remember her. What, that's the thing that annoys you? <laughs> Not 
the fact that I fucked your mum. The fact... <laughs> you don't even remember fucking my mum. <laughs> I'm not being snobbish, but I think you know you're common if you're at the same school as your mum. <laughs> this is a bit snobbish. Do you get annoyed by kids that can't use cutlery properly? That irritates me, if they can't use cutlery properly. Oh. And that would add insult to injury, wouldn't it? If you got stabbed by some asbo yob... <laughs> and they were holding the knife like a pen. <laughs> at what point, and really I'm asking the men, at what point do you get paranoid about receiving enlarge your penis emails? <laughs> it's not just me getting them, is it? <laughs> it's just I'm currently getting about ten a day. Eight of them are from my girlfriend. <laughs> the two from my mum that really hurt. <laughs> hmm. My girlfriend said she wanted me to tease her. I said, all right, fatty. Things don't always work out the way you think. I always thought it was going to be my mum that would catch me masturbating. <laughs> Being you're shocked, imagine my surprise. <laughs> I've got no problem buying tampons. I'm a fairly modern man. But apparently they're not a proper present. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mum! Watching sex on telly with mum and dad, that's embarrassing. I didn't even know they knew to use the camcorder. <laughs> you know those anti-AIDS red ribbons? You don't see so many of them around these days, do you? Hmm. <laughs> that is, I think, because these so-called anti-AIDS ribbons actually offer no protection. <laughs> you think you're upset? I found out from a bloke in the gents. Do you realise that last joke makes me sound a little bit gay? I'm not. I realise I'm wearing the kind of shirt that's often lifted. <laughs> but I'm not. My own mum thought I was gay. When I was 19, my mum was convinced I was gay. It's very difficult to convince your mum you're not gay. Until we got a camcorder, I was fucked. <laughs> my mum told me the best time to ask my dad for anything was during sex. <laughs> not the best advice I've ever been given. <laughs> I burst in through the bedroom door saying, can I have a new bike? <laughs> he was very upset. The secretary was surprisingly nice about it. <laughs> I got the bike. My other, my absolute favourite Christian organisation of all time, it's called Christians Against Teenage Pregnancies. That's the Everest of hypocrisy, isn't it? If Jesus taught us nothing else, he taught us that the unwanted babies of teenage mums can turn out all right. <laughs> <laughs> you look as if you didn't quite understand that. <laughs> Do you know who the protagonist is? It's Jesus. Born at Christmas or Easter. You must have heard of him. <laughs> King of the Jews. Best Jew ever. <laughs> he could walk on water. Well, he probably couldn't walk on water. His mum probably just exaggerated. He was probably very good on ice skates. <laughs> well, this is the last one I'm going to leave you with this, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure talking to you this evening. Obviously, this is uh, it's a lovely T-shirt. World's best dad. I don't know, are there any dads in? Yeah. Yeah, this may, may be a nice thing for you to wear around the house. World's best dad. Nice. You wear that with pride. World's best dad. I fucked your mum. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jimmy Carr. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. Now, there's a scientific theory that states you laugh 30 times more when you're in a room with other people than when you're watching something on a screen. So why not come and see me live? It's jimmycarr.com for tickets and I'm pretty much everywhere. See you then.